I'm on Bahia Honda Key, part of a string of islands called the Florida Keys that stretch from Biscayne National Park all the way to Dry Tortugas National Park. If you're ever lucky enough to stroll the beaches here, you'll find these little small objects washed up on shore. What are they? Sea beans. What are they? Sea beans. Wait, did you say sea beans or Sean Bean? Because sea beans washed on shore would be pretty neat, but Sean Bean washed up on shore would be pretty weird. <laughs> Let's be clear, Mary Ellen does not like this joke. <laughs> Mr. Bean would be funnier. All right, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do a Mr. Bean. Let's do a Mr. Bean. Wait, sea beans or Mr. Bean? Because finding sea beans washed up on shore would be pretty cool, but finding Mr. Bean washed on shore would be pretty weird. Great, great. Let's cut for a second and we'll go to the next day. So what exactly are sea beans? Actually, they are not beans, nor are they from the sea. They are the fruits or seeds of tropical trees. When those seeds mature, they are dropped and get washed into streams and rivers by the rain, eventually making their way into the ocean where they float about, carried on the ocean currents until they get washed up on shore. In fact, the coconuts we enjoy today originated in Asia and have found their way all across the tropics just by traveling around the sea. While this journey sounds an awful lot like Wilson the Volleyball from the movie Castaway, it's actually a very intentional way for tropical trees to transport their seeds. This movement of seeds to new places for germination is called seed dispersal, and there's a bunch of different strategies that plants use. Uh, dandelions have little white parachutes on their seeds to allow the wind to blow them wherever. Burdock seeds have little hooks on them to get attached to animal fur for a free ride. Heck, fruit themselves are a seed dispersal method. Animals and humans will eat the fruit, then discard or poop out the seeds. Tropical ecosystems tend to get a lot of rain, so the trees there have found a way to get their seeds into the watershed and out to the oceans where they can be transported thousands of miles away from the tree that produced them. They do this by creating a little air bubble inside the seed, which makes it less dense than the seawater. Things that are less dense than water will float on top, making it super easy for currents to take those seeds all around the world's oceans. The hog plum, the bay bean, and the sea heart are all types of sea beans you can find combing the beaches of southern Florida. So why go through all the trouble of getting your offspring as far away from you as possible? Seeds have less attitude than your average teenager, and teenagers stick around their families for years. Seeds that germinate near their parents then have to compete with the adult trees for things like sunlight, water, and soil. By getting those seeds as far away from them as possible, those trees are increasing the chances their seeds will have the resources they need to survive. An acorn might not fall far from the tree, but that acorn then probably doesn't grow up into a giant oak, unless it's buried somewhere else by a squirrel and then forgotten about. Hey, another seed dispersal method. Seed dispersal also lets plants colonize new habitat. A lucky enough sea bean will have a whole entire island to itself. Remember, first one to the party gets to choose a playlist. Evolution isn't about being the biggest or the strongest, it's about surviving long enough to reproduce the most offspring. Trees that have found a way to get their offspring away from them have a higher survival rate. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get back to my sea bean diet. If I see beans, I eat them. <laughs> Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.